Praise the Lord. Everybody be seated. If you look around, see we're kind of a little down today. Not down because emotionally down, but because we got people everywhere. You know, one of the, one of the things really exciting about serving God on His terms, He's going to use you. Yes, so when you're available, I guarantee you He's going to use you. And not only that, but He gives you a heart to work. You know, how, many, how many don't like lazy people? <laughs> Is there a lot of lazy people in this world today? A lot of lazy people in the church today. You know, they just, they just don't want to do anything. You know, they got their seat that they go under their little pew or their little seat for so many, many years. And if anybody sits in their seat, there's a cosmic warfare. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But you know, that's not the way God wants it. He wants us to be ready and see. Actually, you're going to find out in a minute when we'll I'm talking about it. He wants us to be ready in season or out of season. He wants us to be the elite the Green Beret, just ready at any moment's notice to go do what he wants us to do. I know, the last time I talked to Joe, he says they want a hundred and some people to go up and help out in the Christmas giveaway, the bicycles and the presents today at Phoenix First Assembly, and then the cafe. I mean, it's just everybody wants us. So that's why we're down. But I'll tell you what, it's really neat to me to be able to see how, how many people we still have left And how we're able to just to rise to the occasion. Is that exciting to you? I tell you, why don't you turn that one next to you and say, you know what? This is an exciting thing, just to live for God. And it's not sitting in a pew. It's getting out there and doing what God wants. You turn around and shake hands with them and say, this is what we need to do. We need to be ready in season and out of season. And we need to be doers. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll have to be as formal today. How's that? we just be a little less formal today? <coughs> Denise, come here a minute. Come here. Jesse, where are you? Come here, Jesse. Blondie? She might not be blonde next week, though. Um, yeah, I might change it back to natural. Change it back to natural. You know what? Harry and Jesse got up real early yesterday morning, took a cross and carried it 17 miles. How was that? Was that fun? Um, I want you to know what the clouds were shining the Lord. That was the only good part about it, besides doing what we had to do. And, um, and uh, it was great. You could actually feel the Lord with you carrying the cross and walking there. And it was still a struggle physically, but it was a fun day. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah. It was great. It was great. You feel like God's called you to do it? Absolutely. You probably wouldn't have done that unless God called you to do it? I've never done 17 miles before now. But since he called you to do it, you were willing to do it. Yes, absolutely. Isn't that neat? Now, she doesn't look like the one that would be out, the type that would want to go out and carry a cross. Amen? Especially yesterday was her birthday. Can I be honest with you? Um, when they first outreached to me in the railroad tracks, they don't do that outreach anymore. They were carrying crosses, and I was actually skeptic. I was like, are they crucifying them? You know, I'm like, I thought of Jesus, of course, but Jesus showed up right after I had that skepticism, and I apologized. And, and I found this place out, and I started carrying crosses that one Saturday. I was like, okay, the Lord just sent me there, and ever since then, I understand now, so it's all good. So you actually carried the cross, what, a couple miles by yourself? Just like three miles. About three miles by yourself, but yet you walked 17 miles. What time did you have to get up? Three o'clock in the morning. Actually, you know what, we woke up at two o'clock in the morning, Jesse woke up about almost three. <laughs> so we, we all <laughs> Who had to wake her up? Did she wake herself up? I have a loud alarm from um, mom and, and, and dad. Oh, you have a lo lo loud, alarm. Have a really loud alarm. Okay. It worked then. It worked. It really worked. Oh, what do you think about this, Jess? Of course, you're an old timer. You just pick up that thing and go no matter how far, don't you? That's correct. No, whatever. Now, where are you going next after well, yesterday? We got a two, three more walks to do it at the end of, by the end of the year. So we're going to get more days. So it's going to be local. So all like uh, three different ministries that's going to put crosses. But you know, you were saying something about Denise that um, she said that she might not look like she can do this, but let, let me tell you that uh, I see this woman every day training for whatever to God put her through. She walked all around the building. She was, you know, this is what it's about. You know, you might, people, God is always watching. And uh, 
everybody's got a time to train. Today, I just so, you know, like you said, there are not many people here today. Um, well, it was, it was pretty amazing going out there today. And this is how God is doing it. Day after day, God is faithful with all of us. He brings, he put food in our, in our table. And you know, the Lord, the word of God says, feed on his faithfulness. And if you feed on his faithfulness, you'll be able to do accomplish a mighty thing that he's doing it. We just witness what he does. That's what we do. As you know, something glory goes to God. All the glory goes to him. Because to be honest with you, when we expect recognition out of all these things, and maybe that's all you're going to get, recognition. And you don't need that. You need more than that grace. That's what I, I pray every day. Amen. You've been doing this a long time. You just get up and go. When somebody calls you, you just get up and go. You, in other words, what, what they do, they take a cross to another church, give those people the cross, and say, oh, you better do something with it. We care to hear that we want, we want to be witnesses. We want to be examples for what you need to do is take this cross out and carry it. Well, I just want you to know that yesterday we put in, we put in check the, 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 the place, uh, the city of Avondale, because we were walking around the, around the flea market. They had a little flea market, and uh, they were not expecting, you know, people are selling this and selling that. We were not selling anything. We were giving free toys, free clothes, and we're walking around everyone with the cross, and uh, we had a, a couple of girls singing songs, and uh, they didn't know what to do with us. And they would say, by the way, we're going to be here for, for the next three hours. And uh, uh, the lady, one of the girls who the, 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 had the cross, she said, well, he, she gave us a megaphone, you know, just to, to start preaching the word. And uh, I took the megaphone and said, if you can hear me, this message is for you. Basically, everybody was around me. Whoa, everybody looking at me like, well, you know, we did a bilingual too. And um, that's what it's about. If you can hear, hey, that's for you. That's not for your uncle or whoever, for whoever is there. And, I, you know, just uh, we make ourselves available to God, right? Might as well just do what he asks us to do. Amen. Go hard, yeah. Amen. What a warrior you've been all this, these many years. I've been blessed. So you know, I've been blessed. Is that getting stronger physically? Man, you know, I never was, I never been that strong. When I was uh, night, uh, when I was 19, 20, 30 years old, I was uh, 49 right now, and I felt stronger than ever. <laughs> because to be honest with you, I don't even walk. I'm 70. About walking, I guess that's what I do. I was talking to this guy. I got 20, 29, almost three, three thousand miles down on my belt walking across. To be honest with you. I wouldn't have done it without God's help. So, so all my addictions are gone. You know, I'm happy, I, I'm, I'm grateful for what God took away from me. You know, people want to stop, uh, he took my addiction, my drug addiction, my alcoholism, you name it. And now he's taking, you know, he's, we just have to remove ourselves. Hey Amen. In other words, he just says, are you available? Or we, why don't you go get your crosses? It's only one, it's only me. <laughs> just you. <laughs> you know, when we're available, God just, he, he uses. Robert? Bringing you and your pretty wife up. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many things we were doing yesterday. You guys didn't get home until after our service, did you? Tell us what you guys were doing. Did you do a... Uh, did, you do, oops, did you do Glenn Rosa yesterday morning? Tell us about that and what, then what you did last night. Well, usually when we do Glen Rosa and we pray out at 9.30, we have a huge circle of disciples. We had um, five. And it was, was yeah, bicycles. everybody was doing the bicycles. So there was just, you know, a few, Sam and um, a few of us. And we went knocking on doors, and we had a ton of food. And I was kind of afraid that there were, we were going to have so much food left over because how are we going to get so many families? Because we couldn't cover as much ground with door knocking as we usually do. But all the food went. All the families came. It was a lot smaller of a, of a service than it usually is, but people just started coming in, you know, people who regularly show up and regularly go to, the, to Glen Rosa. And we got rid of all the food, so it was, it was, it was super awesome. And um, then after Glen Rosa, we went to the nursing home and uh, the care center, the daycare. And then we went to Pastor Tony's in South Phoenix, and we did the outreach out there. And he had a different service, so it started later than it usually does because he had, Phoenix First is giving him three buses to come and get all the people from his community and his church and pick them up to take them for bikes today. <laughs> so the service started late. The whole ordeal, you know, there was the whole sanctuary that he has was packed out with kids and parents, and um, it was just awesome. There was a ton of people, and so it ended really late. We didn't get back till after 9 last night, but it was awesome. So you guys are doing a praise and worship? Yeah. You know, we're going to have a service here tonight. By the way, and who's going to do that service? Oh, yeah, Pastor Robert. <laughs> <laughs> who is Pastor Robert? 
Deborah's husband. <laughs> you talking about that guy over there? That's the one. How's it going, Robert? Man, it's going good, pretty good. You know, last night um, at Pastor Tony's, the, the, the place was filled. There was over, over 100 people. Over 300 people. Wow. <laughs> and, um, you know, a lot of them came because of the bikes, you know. So, but everybody's helping out, building the bikes. But let me tell you something. There are 50 people that came up and uh, received the Lord you know, that never said a prayer before because of that. You know, God's got us doing all kinds of things, doesn't he? Is that exciting? Yeah, that's really exciting. Is this exciting to you? Yeah, it is. And you know, Matthew 4, 19 says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And when I first came here thinking about using bait, you know, like going out for my father's house and telling him, come, you, come get clothes and come get food. And I thought, bait? I thought, you're, you're just like sucker them into it or what? And then I started realizing that. that you bribe them. Yeah, it doesn't matter how you get them there because that seed will get planted. It starts getting watered and it grows and grows. It doesn't matter if you use bikes, clothes, food, whatever works. Amen. I'm telling you, isn't that? That's good. God bless you guys. Amen. Isn't that kind of? By the way, Deborah turned down a $47,000 job to stay with the ministry. Yes, sir. Tell me God isn't working in people. Some of you say, man, that's absolutely nuts. Well, what you were doing is absolutely nuts. The way you think is absolutely nuts. How's that? Man. You get to listen to God. He's going to put some different things in your heart. Jesse, I don't think you were the only one carried across today. What happened to all your reinforcements? Are they elsewhere? Well, who told you that I did it by myself? You did. No, God was with me. Yeah. Yeah. Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. Thanks, no, do you know the guy that was driving today? Um, they drove me over um, uh, the Washington house. Uh, we were running a little late because, uh, like you said, there's a skeleton crew today because a, a lot of our, the guys are, are working. Um, he said, Jesse, we want to stay with you. I said, okay. So that what we say was gas to come back. And it's also, they, they drove around. So when I was walking across, but um, you know, today I went to Jack in the Box, and uh, you know, right after one or the right after one after the other one, six people. I was just praying with six people, and the women inside of Jack in the Box, out of the box. You know, that was pretty cool. The thing is that I got, I was never alone. The thing is, I know I don't think I'm never going to be alone anymore. Because what I do in my privacy, is, well, I don't, I don't have privacy anymore. I got Jesus all the time with me, so. Well, say goodbye to my privacy. You know, thanks the Lord for being around. Well, he gave me a check. And today when I was walking across, I saw that uh, we are never alone. Amen. Amen. Okay. So they never leave us for us. Praise the Lord. Yes. And also, yeah, Denise, I will say I'm sorry. I'm not, not, not going to happen again. Happy birthday. God bless you. You understand it? We helped them put bicycles together up there. It was... Somebody said about 4,000 or 5,000, and we did, was it 2,900? There was 38 total? 3,840. Total. total. And we did how many? 2,700. Who was up there most of the time? Derek, were you up there? Come on up here. In fact, we saw you on TV. I don't know if you knew that or not. It was on the, you were on the news, putting bicycles together. How many did you put together? I'm not sure. A whole bunch of them? Yeah. We all went together hard. You know, everybody did their part. You know, we had an assembly line going. Some put the bikes together. Some checked the bike to make sure they were all uh, equipped and not handlebars not falling apart, seats not falling apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, everybody worked hard. Let me ask a question. I know in my younger days, if I was up there, you have, to, you have to get organized. Do this as fast as you can. This one does this, this one does that. What you guys did? Exactly. I mean, we, like I say, we had a, a group of, I'd say, 10 across, or 10 across, maybe more. Uh, they were putting, uh, putting the bikes together. Once they got those all together, we had a group that was on the bottom that actually checked those bikes, made sure that these guys did their part in putting the bike completely together. And what was your job? Quality. You were the quality control. How come? Hey, wait a minute. Is this fun? Is serving God fun? It felt good. It really did. It felt good to know that you're actually doing something to help somebody else out. And uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it then. I was tired, but uh, I made it through, and I, and I don't mind doing it again. 
How many days are you up there? I've been up there all week. All week. What do you think about this whole program, everything we're doing, how God's just using us to, to minister to people? Well, he's, uh, he's taking me from being that selfish person that I once was <coughs> to actually helping out me now and wanting to do it and feeling good about it. Can I ask you something? Can you give a short testimony? You know, he was a professional football player. And God just got a hold of him. And he, to me, he's, he's really a neat guy because he's, he's, not, he's not, you know, a lot of professional athletes have got a lot of pride. They have to. But he doesn't seem to be that way. Either, either that or you were. And maybe the God's are dealing with you. Well, I was selfish. <coughs> I'm, I'm going to be short with it. With my life, uh, everything was actually, it was, it was kind of easy because uh, a lot of stuff was given to me. And uh, when you have a certain level in your life, uh, people tend to uh, put you on that pedestal. And when they put you on that pedestal, they, it, it makes you feel good. And it, it really made me feel good because to know that I can walk in any place at any time and, and do and get whatever I want. Now, my family were the same way. They did for me, they gave to me whatever I needed. I never felt that I went through life and not having anything because everything was given to me. And it kind of crippled me a little bit because it didn't show me how to actually be that man, that person that I need to be for my kids, etc. So, in essence, it was, it was hard now because once everything is gone, once you're no longer on that pedestal in their eyes, you have to work. And when you don't know how to, it's difficult. So that's where I'm at with that. And it got to a point with me where I didn't know how to work, so I found the other ways by lying, you know, by stealing. And uh, it got me in a little trouble. So here we are, that's my story. Um, I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know who to turn to because I hurt people that I love. I hurt my family. So I'm here now. I'm here now because I think this is the only place I could go. A lot of you guys, uh, I heard the story from JD, you know, when I first got here, how I didn't want to come in here. It's very true. This was a different life for me. But when I looked at it, I looked at it as my selfish ways that I was. You know, I don't, I'm, not, I'm feeling my heart, I didn't deserve this. But I also didn't realize that I did this. You know, and I'm at that point right now that I, I'm doing it day by day with it, and, uh, and I don't mind it, because I do feel the difference in me. I do feel that I'm getting something out of this. So um, I'm here. I'm, I'm here day by day with it, and I'm going to continue on going through with it. Amen, amen, amen. Look what God can do. And I pray that's every one of us. You know, we're all, we're all on a, a journey. We're sojourners. In other words, and once we turn our life over to God, he has a plan for us. And that plan is to draw us closer to him. And he says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And every day, he's drawing us just a little bit closer. Are we willing? Because he's working in us. Knocking off that old stuff. And He's put, I don't know about you, but this is the most exciting thing there is because he's put something. God, 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 God's working in you, doing his will and his good pleasure, drawing us closer to him, giving us a passion for life that we've never had before. And the more you let him do it, the more you can get, get yourself out of the way, and you're going to thank God that he got you out of the way. How many of you I'm talking about? Because if you like you, you're in trouble. Either that or you don't know what the, the true riches he has for you. I mean, I mean to tell you, you know, we did, I can't even tell you all the things we did. We had a, an outreach at Indian Reservation on Friday. They did jail services and 
and everyone, everybody was out there working, we had our soul winning with nothing but girls, and it was, it was neat. But it's just so exciting just to see people being touched by God, being led by God, being used by God. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. How many want that? And this is where we are. This is just, we're a family. So that's why I think today we can just be a little bit more formal because we had everybody else out, the rest of the family out doing other things, so we can just kick back. And like Derek said, they worked hard up there for three days. I'm going to tell you something. That's three-fourths of the bicycles at least, isn't it? And we did it. Plus doing all the other things we do. What an exciting, is this exciting to you or am I just, yeah. am I getting too old to see now? There ain't no sun, so it can't be the sun now. It must be the rain, you know. I'll tell you what, this is, and I can just see next year just getting better and better and better. Amen. How about you? Can you see that? How many really can sense there's something, like Eric's talking about, there's something happening in your life? And you're just going day by day. That's all I know how to do, too. You just go day by day. But I'll tell you something, every day gets just a little bit better. Amen? Because he's training us. He's getting us ready. And he is. Everything we do, I believe God's getting us ready. And he's not only getting us ready, but he's using us. Even when we're not perfected yet, which we think we are, that's okay. We're still a work in progress, and he's using that. Amen? Okay. We need to take our offering. And Joe says that we're just, we were, there's a good chance that we might break even this year. Working the black. Amen? So, Daddy, and here's a miracle. Rather than stealing it, he's taking it. <laughs> the offering. The offering. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to ask everybody how many here? are here for the first time ever. Raise your hand. Stand up, please. You're here for the first time. Look around. And for those of us that consider this our church, our family, make sure you greet them, you know, because, and welcome to our, you know, welcome today. You know, um, last night, Pastor Don was talking about preaching and, and talking about the heart. And... You know, how the three wise men, three kings, brought the offering to Jesus, you know. And, and, uh, and today I ask, you know, what's in your heart today? And what are you bringing to the house of God? You know, the Bible talks about in Luke, uh, about the, the widow's mite. You know, how she gave. Well, you know what? Let me read it. I think it's important to, you know, we can all share what God's put in our hearts, but it's always better to read it straight out of the Bible. Amen? So it says, while Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts in the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has given more than all the rest of them. Or... Well, they had given a tiny part of their surplus, but, the, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. And that's what it is right there. You know, give everything you have to God. And he talks about the principle of tithing. I remember when I was in prison, and I really got understanding of that. And, and I used to send my tithes to a radio program because that was my church. You know, that's the only place I could send money back to God because that's where I was getting fed. And I learned that. And ever since I've been, I, I, I did that every time I could. And since I've been here, I've done that. And I, you know what? God truly is faithful and truly he provides. If you just stand on his word and believe and trust that what he says he's going to bring to pass and you do your little part, and I can't tell you how awesome and how much blessing he's brought not only to me personally, but to my family and, and to this community. You hear testimonies like Derek's. You see, you have your own testimony. You see what this house, this ministry, this church, this family is able to do when it, when it you know, we're just here to help give back what was given to us. Most of us, 98, 95% of the staff came, or I call homegrown. They went through the ministry. They went through discipleship. So we know. 
So give back. Sow your seed to this ministry because it's such an awesome ministry. So many miracles here. You know, people come here and they're in awe, like, ooh, look what. Tell us what's normal because that's what God's put in our hearts. So but trust him with your finances. Trust him with your finances and see what he can do with that little bit of those little two coins that you put in. Because we ain't rich, but what we got, we give from our heart. Because we believe in this man's vision. And we see it. Jesus told Thomas, for you have seen, you believe. Blessed are those that have never seen and believed. You know, we see it and believe, but yet we've never seen Jesus. But we're still doing it because we believe in Jesus Christ and what he does here. So, Heavenly Father, we give you the praise, honor, and glory. Father God, once again, I just ask, touch people's hearts, Lord. You put it in their hearts, Lord, to, to want to give, Lord, and to give what you've told them to give, Lord. Let them hear your still, small voice, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I want to give a shout out to those that are in the overflow. I'd like to say good morning. God bless you guys over there. And hope you continue on, continuing on in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Do 
Let's open our Bibles to 1 Peter. That's our assignment for today. We won't have time to listen to the entire book. I urge you to take some time to listen to the last couple chapters that we won't be covering. But I think we're going to see a pattern with Peter as we did with Paul. He's going to first of all tell you who you are in Christ so you understand your being. And then from that being, he's going to challenge you to start doing. And with Peter, it's the, um, the new birth that we have into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So let's listen to chapters 1 and 2 of First Peter. The first letter of Peter, chapter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ, and for sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible 
and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you, in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preached the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children. Do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, for all flesh is like grass, in all its glory, like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. First Peter 2. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god through jesus christ for it stands in scripture behold i am laying in zion a stone a cornerstone chosen and precious and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame so the honor is for you who believe but for those who do not believe the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows 
while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. You know how however we want to look at it, it's all based on the word of God. And, you know, we do a lot of things, you know, like I said, we're helping. And Phoenix Church Assembly, of course, is passing out 10,000 presents and bicycles and ministering to people and encouraging people. But it's all for naught if we don't get down to the Word of God and let the Word of God just have its way in our life. And that's what's going to keep us and change us and give us a new heart and that new mind that we all need is simply the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And, of course, part of the Word of God is to do it. That's what we're trying to do.